Today we've got a bit of a strange experiment here to try. This year already we've roasted apples, sweet potatoes, pumpkins, marshmallows, just to name a few. And they all ran into the same problem. They didn't taste baked at all. They tasted completely raw. So with Thanksgiving and Christmas ahead of us, I think we need to focus on how to get roasted flavors into our kombucha. Because if we can't get the flavor of a baked potato into our bottle, then I honestly don't know what we're doing here. For our first bottle, we're gonna start with plain raw apple, just to give us kind of a baseline of what this would taste like if we did nothing. So I have got 120 grams here of diced apple. And I'm gonna blend that with a bit of kombucha. The more surface area we expose to the kombucha, the more flavor we're gonna steep out of it. And that's bottle number one. Next up, I've got our diced apple again, except this time I've roasted it at 350 degrees until it was quite brown. By baking it, we'll have browned the outside quite a bit, but inside it should still be quite a bit of raw apple flavor and still a lot of moisture still inside. It mostly smells like apple. And that's bottle number two. But that last method's one we've gone to before with kombucha, many times actually, and uh, spoilers, but it never really worked. It just always still tasted raw. So for this next test, I'm gonna slice it really thin with a mandolin, just try to get as much browning as possible to leave none of that raw apple inside. And I've also got these sliced up just so we can assure we get as much as possible. These are also getting baked at 350 degrees just until browned. Our apple chips are now done. And you can see that they've dried out quite a bit. So I'm just gonna crush these up and throw them right into our blender. They do smell distinctly roasted though. None of them got burnt, but they do have kind of that toasted marshmallow smell. It certainly smells unique. That's bottle number three. Next up, we've got another diced apple, except this time I've tossed it with brown sugar before I baked it, because that'll help with caramelization. Uh, because the sugar will caramelize. And as you can see, it did turn out quite a bit browner. These are also getting blended. But roasting's not the only way to get this caramelized flavor into the bottle. Uh, I think we can try also making a extra thick applesauce and just letting that brown sugar inside caramelize. So I am gonna start with another 120 grams of apple, then I'm gonna add 31 grams of brown sugar and 110 grams of water, which is about half a cup. Then I'm going to simmer it, mash it, and just try to get out all the moisture I can. Kind of just tastes like applesauce. And that's bottle number five. And what are we looking for exactly? Well, with roasting, we should be letting out a lot of the water, which will concentrate the flavors inside the apple, which doesn't actually matter for us because we're going to be adding liquid right back. But it'll also break down some of the cell walls, so it could be that some of that flavor and sugar is more readily available to the kombucha. Also, some of the more complex sugars could break down into simpler sugars, also becoming more available to the SCOBY. Browning it should also give us those roasted caramel malty notes, along with just changing some of the flavor profiles entirely, which is why a baked apple tastes distinctly different from a raw apple, which is why it's always so confusing to me that this refuses to work so far. But now that we've got all of them bottled, we just need to let them sit in the fridge for three days to let that flavor steep out. Then we're going to strain it, top it off, and let it carbonate. So I'll see you then. Three days have passed, so we are ready to strain out our applesauce. 
And I'm gonna do it through a milk bag so that I can uh, finely strain it, get it as clear as possible before we start to carbonate it. And I'm gonna use our plain apple here as the basis. So if it needs more sugar, if it's too sour, we can adjust right now. That is quite a bit of mush. Actually, I don't know why I'm bothering with the metal strainer because I wanna be able to squeeze it all out and get as much of that apple as possible. It is going to be a slow process, but we just wanna maximize our investment here. Give it a quick taste here. A little too sweet, very apple-y, so I think it's fine. So I've cleaned out the bottles. I'm just going to pour them right back in. I'm gonna do the same for all the others, and then I'm gonna to top them off with some plain raw kombucha. And now I'm gonna let them carbonate at 78 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit for three days, and refrigerate it, and we'll be back to taste test. All right, we are back. Let's just line these up and see what happens. We are gonna start with our raw apple. Next, we've got our baked apple. Our baked apple chips. Our brown sugar baked apple. And our applesauce. And you can see we've got quite the range of colors here and also the range in carbonation. Definitely the raw apple, the applesauce had the most carbonation, followed by our brown sugar baked. Uh, these two in the middle here, just the plain baked and the plain baked chips had almost none at all. But this is not a contest of carbonation or flavor. This is just purely to see, can we get the baked flavor into these glasses? We're gonna start with our plain control here. It's rich, it's sweet, it's distinctly fresh apple. It's got some yeast funk to it though. Probably too sweet. I think I would have used less apple, but it was a pretty arbitrary amount that I picked. Now for our baked apple, we've got a, a little bit of a darker color there. And it's got a different smell to it too. It does smell a little baked. There is a hint of baked flavor in there, but there is still raw apple as well. I got the fly though. Well, uh, there was a baked flavor, but there was still some of that raw apple taste as well. Uh, it was distinctly not carbonated enough though. It was very flat. There was almost no carbonation at all. Now let's try our baked apple chips. It's very bitter, very astringent, not even distinctly apple anymore. Very flat. I think somewhere in between these two is where I would like to be because the baked apple cubes, they were good, but they weren't distinctly baked enough. So I feel like perhaps a handful of chips might have helped. But let's keep going and see. Hopefully we can keep all of our glasses intact. This is our brown sugar baked. It's pretty good. It's pretty close to what I would want it to be, except it's made it too sweet, adding that extra sugar to it. Yeah, it, that extra sweetness just kind of masks any of that extra nuanced flavor that we would have added to it. It's a hint of apple, but it's mostly just a punch of sweet. And we could have used less apple to balance that out, but 
And then I think we would have lost that baked apple flavor in, in its own way. So I'm not convinced that this is the answer. This one's interesting. It does taste like an applesauce kombucha. It's just, it's also too sweet. And it's also just not the baked flavor I would want to go for since we didn't really bake it or brown it. it tastes like thoroughly cooked apple, just not specifically roasted apple, no matter how much browning we got out of it. There's a good amount of acidity, but too much sweetness and just the wrong direction to go in. So I don't think this is the way. I don't think this is the way. I think this is the way. I think our broken glass was the answer. I think if we threw in just a handful of baked chips, I think that would push us a little bit towards that bitter astringent note. And I think that's kind of what we want here. Because I like the darkness. I like the smell of it. It does smell very much like kind of those roasted marshmallow notes. But I think this is too far. Maybe a quarter of the fruit should be sliced, perhaps less. And so while we might not have found the exact answer here today, I think what we did find is all the options that do not work. And I think that's usually most important. We know that we can't just reduce it to a syrup. We know that we can't just toss it with some extra sugar. And we know that we can't just burn it all to hell. So I think we've narrowed in. Delicious. Sweet, sour, but it's got that hint in the background there of a little bit of, uh, I don't know, a little ashiness. We're narrowing in. This is all about one step at a time. So thank you for putting up with this. This is Reckless Pooch.